Hey everybody, it's Rabbit. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be reviewing the new vehicle that just got added for the last event, the Object 292. And we're going to be checking it out to see if it is maybe a little too overtuned or if it's perfectly fine where it's at battle rating wise. Now before we get started, one thing to note is that the Object 292 is an event vehicle, not a premium vehicle, so it doesn't efficiently research anything that is too far away from its battle rating, unlike the premium vehicles that you might be used to. Additionally, as it's an event vehicle, you do have to research all of the upgrade stock, so the stock and spader performance will be kind of different. However, one of the big advantages of the 292 is that it only has two shells, and it comes with both of them from the word go, and its engine is actually pretty good stock, so on the whole, its stock performance isn't dramatically different from its spaded performance, but you might notice a difference. And we'll start off as we usually do by looking at the mobility. Now the 292 is essentially a T80B in terms of mobility. It uses the improved gas turbine. This gives it a fairly good power to weight ratio. In the forward gears, it's reliably quite powerful. And it does also turn pretty well and reverse pretty quickly. However, its top speed in reverse is quite poor at only 11 kilometers an hour. This is still good for a Soviet MBT at this battle rating, but compared to something like an M1 Abrams or a Leo 2A4, you will notice it definitely feels pretty sluggish. Now protection is where this vehicle starts to get kind of interesting. Originally when it was spoiled, people thought it would be like the T80Bs, as is the engine. However, it does appear to have an extra armor plate over the upper front hull. This gives the turret armor face a protection of about 400 plus millimeters and the hull about 500 plus. So there's only a handful of vehicles around this battle rating that can reliably click on the middle of you, with the one that you'll see the most often being the M1128 or the Wolfpack. So on the whole, I would say the armor is pretty reliable. However, you do have standard Soviet weak spots such as the driver's port, the lower front plate, and even some areas around the breach. And it is important to keep those in mind because a lot of people that are used to engaging Soviet tanks and are just shooting these places by reflex will still take you out. One thing I did notice about these side profile shots is that because the powder charges are actually stored in the back of the turret, you have less of the ammo carousel to potentially block shots. So generally speaking, unless somebody actually hits something like a fuel tank that will screw up with the spalling, most of the time shots to the direct side will just take out both of your turret crew with no real problem. Your opponent can also shoot the turret bustle with the ammo in it, however I found in practice that a lot of times the ammo just doesn't detonate for some reason, so this isn't really the best shot for people to shoot, but they will shoot there anyway. If I were to broadly characterize the armor, I would say it's quite good and quite reliable, or at least as reliable as any other tank's armor is at this battle rating. Obviously you still have weak points, but by moving your turret, moving your hull, and making yourself a more annoying target, you will bounce shells more consistently a lot more than most contemporary vehicles, so in this respect I would say the tank is quite good. Firepower is obviously the star of the show with the Object 292, however you have a 152mm auto-loaded cannon that fires one of the fastest darts in the game, it moves at almost 2 km per second, and has almost 700mm of flat penetration at point blank. So all in all, it is a very powerful gun. However, the high explosive round is no joke either. The high explosive round has almost double the explosive filler of the standard Russian 125mm cannon and can reliably one-shot almost everything, even including things like main battle tanks. However, I did run into some consistency issues with both shells, but this is to be expected. Most shells of this battle rating do have the odd inconsistency problems. On the whole, you can kind of just take out whatever shell you want and main whatever shell you care to, which is pretty nice, and it leaves me in a position where I usually take more high explosive rounds with this tank than I do with a lot of contemporary vehicles because I know the high explosives can still basically kill anything. The autoloader itself has a 10 second fixed reload which never goes lower and also has a 16 round magazine so if you take 17 rounds the only places the powder charge ex exist is in the back of the turret so you are reasonably safe from ammo detonations in that scenario. Now one thing to note is that 17 rounds may not seem like much but in practice I found it was more than enough to have a good game because I wasn't having that much trouble one shotting enemies at least in most cases. So on the whole I do feel like you can kind of get away with running 17 rounds. Firepower isn't flawless however, the reload of 10 seconds is a little on the long side, however because you can often disable enemies just by hitting them center mass, both with the high explosive and the dart, usually not that big of a deal, however the bigger problems were the elevation speed which is incredibly slow, so if you're fighting on maps that have lots of upward angles it can be very awkward, additionally it doesn't have any machine guns, it doesn't have a coax or a roof mounted machine gun, so occasionally you'll run into an enemy like a chaparral where you don't really have a good or efficient way to kill it without 
without essentially having to reload to a high explosive round and fire that at it. So that is a little bit of a tedious aspect to the tank, but on the whole I would say it's not very bad. And the firepower aspect is quite good, in fact you could basically take this at any battle rating you like, and the shell is still effective, or shells plural, both of them still work against anything in the game. There are some other small factors that we have to discuss before going into any real conclusions on the vehicle. The first one is that the 292 doesn't have thermals. This is more of a problem if it were in another tech tree, but it turns out the Russian tech tree at this battle rating, most of the main battle tanks, in fact all of them, don't have thermals. The only Russian main battle tank with thermals at this battle rating is actually the premium terms. The uh, T-80B is the lowest battle rating tank at 10.3 that actually does have thermals. The other one is the complete lack of smoke grenades, and that actually is pretty annoying, especially if you're in a position where you want to withdraw because you're in a major enemy movement lane, but you also don't want to leave yourself completely exposed from behind. So that one does kind of annoy me. In fact, the lack of machine guns, lack of thermals, and lack of smoke are all collectively minor issues. Occasionally they will get on your nerves, but they won't actually get you killed. And I feel the core competency of the tank, the firepower, mobility, and armor are all really there in such a way that these other minor features don't really hurt you as much as they would on another tank that had much harsher limitations. Now we get to the parts of the video where we start looking at some potential conclusions. I have been grinding the Russian tech tree pretty frequently at this point, I've seen a lot of the vehicles they have both at this battle rating and higher battle ratings, and at 10.0 the best you really get, at least in the main tech tree, is the T-72B 1989. You also have the T-72B that's also at 10.0, and then at 10.3 you have the T-80B. In performance, the Object 292 is far closer to the T-80B than either of the T-72s, and the real difference maker and the thing I think people really underestimate about this vehicle is the mobility. The mobility is incredibly good, especially for a Russian tank of this battle rating, and it allows it to get into key positions very quickly in a way that a lot of other Russian vehicles of this BR just kind of can't. Outside of maybe the BMP, most of them are significantly more sluggish on acceleration and in terms of overall top speed. In that respect, I find it very weird that it's below the T-80B and that because I broadly, at worst, would call it a side grade to the T-80B. Obviously, you lose the machine guns, you lose the thermal imaging, you lose the contact one, and you lose the smoke launchers, but all of that's more of like minor stuff that sometimes matters and sometimes doesn't, whereas in terms of the key armor, mobility, and firepower aspects, it's more of a trade-off rather than a straight-up upgrade or downgrade. So unless you're running into a scenario where one of those aspects really comes into play, the T-80B and the 292 are roughly equivalent. In that respect, the 292 is basically just a T-80 at 10.0, which is kind of unreasonable to me, and I really don't think it should be at this battle rating. This isn't the first time we've seen something like this either. When the T-80 UM2 was added to the game, one of the biggest downsides it had over the T-80U and T-80UK was that the T-80 UM2 had no thermal imaging. But that was really about it in terms of its downsides, so it basically just ended up being a T-80U at a lower BR and ended up being incredibly good. So I don't really think something like a lack of thermal imaging or minor creature comforts are a major deal breaker for a vehicle in such a way that it should really move them up or down in battle rating, or at least not to any significant degree. And the difference between 10.3 and 10.0 is at least somewhat pronounced. Something like an XM803 can end up fighting this thing, and a MET70 can fight it without it being a max up tier, and neither of those tanks are particularly well suited to dealing with it at all. In addition, if you move it up to 10.3 or 10.7, the 292 can still fight and kill everything it meets with basically no problem. It's really just a question of do you have good map positioning and awareness and can you click on the enemy first and if all of those are yes, you can beat basically anything in the game with the 292. So I don't really understand the rationale that leads it to be added to the game at 10.0 and this does feel a little peculiar in my opinion. Although, as I discussed with the 2S38 video, I do expect it probably won't move that much because, yet again, the Russian teams at 10.0 are kind of awful. But that's just my opinion. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you like or don't like the Object 292. Personally, I think it's a fantastic vehicle. If you have the coupon for it, I would definitely pick it up. I also anticipate this thing is going to go up in price a lot because it's a Russian MBT and a good and unique one. So if you do want to turn this over on the market, then it's also a great opportunity for that. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe. That always helps out the channel. As always, don't give it to shoes.